Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. John's Virtual Church, Morning Prayer, Rite 1. Our service begins on page 2 in your bulletin. The Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, in the grace and consolation of thy Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the the Son, Son, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord hath manifested forth his glory. O come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the The Lord, Lord, all ye lands. lands. Serve Serve the the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. The Lord hath manifested forth his glory. O come, let us adore him. Let us pray together a portion of Psalm 99, alternating by half verse. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, All the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, 
that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in saying together Canticle 2. Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days and told no one any of the things they had seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we celebrate the Transfiguration, this ultimate mountaintop experience with um, Jesus and what I like to call his executive committee. As they go up the mountain to pray in this incredible experience of Moses and Elijah and Jesus and the cloud and the voices, and Peter, like many of us, says what we all long to hear. Let's stay here on this mountaintop, this experience. And I... I resonate with Peter, especially now in the midst of this time, which feels like a very low valley where we are struggling. And yet Jesus and his executive committee go down the mountain. So that is an interpretation of this um, Holy Scripture that is pretty popular. Um, our bishop, um, Bishop Rob Hirschfeld, when he was interviewing, um, we had a conversation about the Transfiguration, and he shared with me, or with us, a, an interpretation that has really brought the Transfiguration alive in a new way for me. Because we tend, as Christians, somewhat rightfully so, to spend a lot of time focused on Jesus, and that Jesus' transfiguration and that his face shone just like Moses when he went up with the tablets came down and Moses' face shone because he had seen God. And what Bishop Rob said is that perhaps, yes, Jesus was transfigured. But in our experience, in our encounter with the living Christ, in our encounter with Jesus, we are transfigured. Imagine that for a minute. Think about those times in your life when you have experienced the light of Christ. Those times that you have been changed. Some of those have been indeed for me literal mountaintop experiences. Climbing in the white mountains. Seeing those sunrises and those sunsets. 
and seeing that majesty. It is transformative. But more often than not, for me, those experiences with Jesus are encounters with human beings. They are where we meet the divinity in each of us. And we are called forth. It is a new understanding when somebody might say a word that might not feel that nice, but it is kind. And it tells the truth in a way that you might be able to understand. It is a thing for me as a white man in America that realizing and having a friend who happened to be a different shade of color, a different race, a different experience, and him gently saying to me when I was about 22 years old, Rob, do well in this world. You're going to win a lot. But realize you started the race on the back turn. Wow. When I heard that, at first I was like, oh, what do you mean? And yet that kind word transfigured me. To understand that just because I started on the back turn didn't mean I was bad. It just meant I had some responsibility to do something with that gift. Not that I didn't work hard, not that I didn't earn things, but that I indeed had been given many things. And so how we experience our life, how we have these transfiguration moments, and what we do with them. I told a story not long ago of being at a vigil where I looked at a human being and I had prejudged them. And yet when I talked to them, I realized that Jesus was giggling at me, saying, don't judge my children, love them, just like I love you. So our work, perhaps, our gifted work, is to be transfigured, to recall, recount, to remember those encounters with the living Christ and to let that light shine in us. Because now more than ever, with what's going on in this world, I think we need to pause when we hear these words. We need to pause when we hear this story. Because as I said at the beginning, we do not feel like we are on a mountaintop right now. And yet, Christ is with us. May we have the courage to hear this story anew this morning, to look at our own stories, to examine our mountaintops and our valleys, and to know that God in Christ is with us. May we all, like Christ, be transfigured this day and let our light shine for all. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. 
Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, who on the holy mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses thy well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in raiment white and glistening, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who make us as glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who did stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee. For the honor of thy name. Amen. Your intercessions and thanksgivings are now invited. Let us gather our prayers together as we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, that we should show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Hi folks, I'm so glad you're with us on for St. John's Virtual Church this Sunday, or whenever you're joining us. Um, a few quick announcements. Um, as you can see, um, the doors are open. We have a little bit of motorcycles going by, but it is um, nice to be in the church and have the doors open and have it be a little cool. But um, know that we miss being in here all together. And um, as soon as it is safe, we will be doing it. Um, if you haven't read our Regathering Task Force letter that we sent out to the entire parish, um, it is on our website if you wanted to look at that or maybe check your junk mail. It might have gotten in there if you haven't seen it. But um, it was um, a labor of love to put together and um, we've gotten a lot of good feedback but would love to get your feedback about how you feel about that. Some other good news is that we are moving forward with Fellowship Hall in phase two of our capital campaign. 
We are working to complete the work in Thatcher Hall, but we have all the approvals. We have one more board dance to do with our planning board, but we hope that will go well. We are getting bids now for the connector as we call, that we call Fellowship Hall. And so um, that is just great news. And uh, it's your generosity and prayers that have gotten us here. So um, that is awesome. Also, I just want to reiterate that families, we are praying for you. If you are headed back to school um, and dealing with all that, we know that it is just a lot. We are thinking of teachers, we are thinking of administrators, of school board members, of our entire community as this, um, this heavy decision is um, being contemplated and plans and, and how pretty impossible it feels. And so just know that we are praying for you and please reach out to us if we can do anything else. Take good care. Have a great week. Join me in saying a prayer for the power of the Spirit. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be amongst you and with all those you love and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Take good care.